Good afternoon from Cologne, Germany. A very warm welcome from EASA, on behalf of EASA, to this webinar on the roles and responsibilities of maintenance personnel. Um, it is a pleasure to have you there with us today. Uh, we have, in terms of registration, that is really a very, this is a very popular webinar. We have registrations from all over the world, as you might have seen in the, in the notes in the chat. So thank you for being there. Hope you find this uh, session with you uh, interesting and, and relevant for your work and to help you to understand better some, some key elements of the roles and responsibilities of, of maintenance personnel. So before starting, allow us just a few words on who is here with you uh, today. My name is Eugenia Diaz Alcázar. I'm the Worthiness Standards and Implementation Section Manager in the Flight Standards Directory here in EASA. I have the pleasure to have with me uh, two of my colleagues, uh, Jeremy Nevo, who is Senior Worthiness Expert, uh, whose role, core tasks are rulemaking, and my colleague uh, Carmen Bonillo, who is a Worthiness Expert and whose main tasks are in standardization. So as you see, we have prepared ourselves to give you, uh, yeah, from different perspectives, uh, a good uh, technical session. Allow me to, to say one more word because we have a person, another colleague, uh, Tom, helping us from the technical side. So thank you, Tom, for helping us. This would be impossible without having Tom with us today. And yeah, now we are ready to, to give uh, yeah, a few elements, general notes, to have a smooth session today. The session is recorded. This is important, first, for your awareness, and second, because it will be shared in the website. Uh, you probably have already realized that you are muted. Uh, please, videos off. We will keep our video on, of course. The slides uh, will be in EASA website, so no worries about that. We will put them there as soon as possible. Uh, I already mentioned that the webinar has been really very popular in terms of registration. Uh, so it was uh, a bit of a challenge no? to, to find an efficient way of having your feedback. This is why we decided to use a slider and, and a few polls. Uh, because we are really interested on, on, on having at least the major points that you want to raise. Uh, this means that when we go to a slide, though, we will start checking the ones that we are most devoted. Um, so this means, please, if you want to raise a new question, first check if your question, the main element of your question is already in an existing uh, question, because Again, it will be voted and it will give us a better picture of where we are and what it is more important for you. Uh, just a last element before we go to the next slide, what's the objective of this webinar? Is to present you a coming uh, policy paper that the ASA is ready to publish and to promote the key elements on this paper. So the main structure of this webinar will be we will use some, some slides, of course, to give you, again, the key messages of this paper. We will have a session for questions and answers. Once we have finished the, the slides, we will have this session. We will see how much we can cover. Uh, the intention is to cover as much as possible, but yeah, I, I'm sure that you understand that there is a time limitation as well here. We will have a pulse check as well. And we will finalize this session, basically giving you uh, the next steps for, for your information for transparency purposes. So, yeah, the first question, which is a relevant question, is why is EASA going to publish another paper? Because probably most of you uh, are aware that there is an existing paper already in, in the EASA web page. Uh, you have the link there on, on your screen. This paper covers uh, two main topics, CAMO and 145 responsibilities and responsibilities of B1, B2 support staff. Uh, there has been an evolution on these, on these concepts presented in the current paper. It is not a revolution. Eh? The concepts, the main concepts there still apply, 
but we saw that because of the amendments in the regulation, because of the feedback we have received through different channels that the agency has, some terminology could be better clarified and we could give more visuals to, to help to this clarification and, and modernize the content. Uh, so basically, that was the main reason why we decided not for the full scope of the existing paper, but in particular for the roles and responsibilities of maintenance and staff, for this specific scope, we plan to issue a new policy paper. And again, trying to reinforce the key messages. This is the most important um, objective of, of this coming paper. And here I give the floor to my colleague, Carmen. Yeah. Um... Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I am tasked this afternoon to start presenting briefly, but uh, the, the, the new draft paper. Uh, this is um, just uh, the heading of the paper. You have already received uh, the paper, so it's not new to you, uh, at least if you have opened and uh, have seen at least the the title and, uh, and the content of it. Uh, the key message here is that the paper is about the um, aircraft maintenance in maintenance organization. And um, anyway, we are presenting here key pr principles that can be very well extended or might be applied to, to other PARCA organizations. We are uh, focusing on the, those organizations that are based on the Part 66 licenses. But uh, it can be that other uh, licensing system might have also um, equivalent uh, system. So now we will go into more details on the content. And I will go to the next slide. Well, let me check because I am controlling also the presentation. OK, so as Eugenia said before, um, the paper is uh, not a revolution, it's based on a paragraph of the um, regulation that was, uh, that is uh, 145A50. And uh, we have to, to highlight very much that we have uh, taken from, from this uh, paragraph the term verific verification or to verify. That is the reason that we are talking about uh, level of verification and is uh, main thing that uh, we will be repeating. <laughs> Uh, many times this this afternoon. Um, so I will go to the next slide and maybe maybe what we can add here is really the, the importance of the term verification is basically you verify and then you certify. I think that's yeah, really yeah. the main yeah, thanks, really. topic and really the main concept that we are describing later on. Yeah, this is the message uh, uh, repeated in the in the presentation. So now we talk uh, about uh, among the many roles that uh, we have in in the involving the maintenance uh, of aircraft, uh, like planning, management. We are going to focus here on the three specific roles that are closer to to the aircraft and that. Uh, means that um, uh, starting from from the the uh, highest level the certifying staff uh, which uh, has to to verify and certify according to the um, uh, scope of uh, its uh, his her authorization um, and the uh, same for support staff verifies and according to his her authorization and the important thing is common to both is that uh, they both require Part 66 uh, license. Um, therefore, the authorization has to be uh, according to the license. Uh, one thing that is important is the, the license that doesn't grant automatically the authorization because there are uh, requirements that, that the organization is responsible to, to, to check before, before granting the, the authorization. So going to the next slide, um, there are uh, other authorized persons, so meaning the support staff and certifying staff are authorized, but others might carry out also maintenance in the organization 
under also um, authorization by that uh, organization. And the license in this case is not necessary. This person might have or might not have the, the, the license. So anyway, the authorization is again according to, to the organization procedure. And I think the next slide is back to my colleague, Jeremy. Yeah, so thank you. We have seen now uh, the three role, uh, the three main role in, in the staff, the certifying staff, uh, support staff and authorized person. Let's see now how all this articulates. Huh? And all this is really in accordance with, with the, the, the principle of the regulation. It's nothing really new here. And we are speaking, of course, uh, for the foreign organization to the EU regulation. So this authorized person uh, here will carry out the task. So this person, he has a license or not, maybe not, it's okay. Uh, but it's, we are speaking here about really carrying out the task, huh? holding the tools. And uh, so this person is doing that. And at the end, there is uh, what we call and what we so before the sign off, so the sign off is task by task. It could be step by step. It's really at the at the task or low level. So this task being carried out, what we are explaining here in this paper is that yeah, you you need to this needs to be verified. Huh? We have seen it before. There is a verification step in, in in the process. So this is verified by the support staff. So the support staff does not necessarily verify a task by task or step by step. It will verify really the, the maintenance, the, the event. Well, what are we speaking about? Because maybe it will verify the repair. And in the repair, there are several tasks in it. So we'll verify really the, the final uh, maintenance uh, product. So you will verify more at, at, at this level. And this person, as we said, he has to have, this is an obligation. This person must have a Part 66 or uh, Part 66 license. This person needs to be uh, licensed. And to formalize this uh, verification, uh, we need to introduce a kind of, or the organization needs to find a way to formalize. Yes, I, uh, I really did verify, and they will verify it. Here we put the example of a summary sheet, it could be a tally sheet, it could be something else, it could be an electronic. Uh, we are here displaying wet signature, but it could very well be electronic signature, no problem. So, but yeah, this step has to be formalized somehow at, at a certain level. So, and now, uh, because we are in base maintenance on, on this slide, the, the process is not completely finished. There is another layer of the, uh, we are now waiting for the uh, certificate of release to service. So this certificate of release to service will be uh, in the responsibility of the certifying staff and this certifying staff needs also to do his bit. Uh, he needs to verify not only the maintenance because, okay, it's, he can rely for this on, on, on the uh, on the support staff, but there is also the process. Where are we in the in, in the maintenance event? Uh, what is the general condition? Do we have problems? Uh, is there anything more to, to to defer, or do we have new things? So this is more the level of the certifying staff. So we are here putting that he verify the maintenance, the process. And also the general condition, can I, uh, is the aircraft uh, really in, in good condition after the maintenance? So, of course, this person, this advanced staff, he holds a 66 license and he is in charge of the um, certificate of release to service. But once again, this verification that we are putting here, and we'll go in more detail later, uh, it has to be tuned, okay? It's not. Uh, uh, it, it, there is a level of verification involved. It's not always the same for every task. It depends on many things. So we will cover this. So the verification is not, uh, yeah, is not uh, always the same. So it has to be adapted. But okay, we will come to this later. So this was this was base maintenance uh, when there is C certifying staff involved. Now we go to the the case where um, there is a notarized person. Uh, doing some maintenance and it's released directly uh, by the certifying staff. So typically, uh, this is the line maintenance, but there are other cases where you can use it, but typically it's a line maintenance scenario. And okay, it's very similar. So the first step is uh, the authorized person also carrying out the task, is signed off, there is uh, an authorization for this, he's authorized, they have the right to do that. 
it will formalize this by a sign off. And then there is a verification step by the uh, certifying staff directly. Um, and same as before, in this case, the certifying staff directly verify not only the maintenance, the, the end product of the, of, of, of the maintenance task, but also process general condition. Where are we? Did, you, did we complete everything? Did we use the right tool? Uh, and, and of course, the general condition of the aircraft uh, before releasing the certificate of release to service. So I think I covered most of what I wanted to say. Of course, maybe one thing more is that if the certifying staff itself is doing the task, of course, it's it's a one step uh, action. Huh? You uh, carry out the task and you certify for for yourself. You are authorized to do that. The certifying staff is always uh, allowed to to do the maintenance, of course, and to do the task himself and to certify his own maintenance. No problem with that. This is really the case where we have uh, an authorized person uh, not holding a certification authorization on this slide. But certifying staff can always, uh, of course, uh, do the, the job. So um, we have seen a bit now the mechanism of how it articulates. Uh, Carmen now will explain you better what we mean really by this verification. What's inside this verification? So Carmen, can you explain us? Yes, thank you, Jeremy. We we try to make um, a lot of uh, effort to, to clarify what uh, kind of tasks are included in the verification. And, and we think that there are really three main pillars to, to, to clarify verification. The one is uh, to monitor. So the, um, the maintenance that has been ordered has to be completed. Uh, but uh, while doing the maintenance, uh, you detected uh, uh, deficiencies are reported uh, so the, there is a check uh, and uh, also evaluation of, of, of what is reported of course uh, some maintenance tasks are easily going um, uh, completed others uh, are taking longer so the, the, this is uh, all evaluated during this monitoring then we have the second one, uh, that is the assistance, and uh, we see that uh, as a as a dual line, uh, going up or going down. So uh, the staff uh, carrying the maintenance uh, check with the support staff. The support staff check with the staff carrying the maintenance. So this includes, uh, you know, that uh, whatever the question is, uh, that the um, support, uh, the, the, the staff carrying the maintenance only with the uh, um, privilege to, to, to sign off, but not to, to, to do the support staff uh, or the verification part, they, they will check uh, with, the, with the support staff and certifying staff as necessary. Um, so that means also that um, this, the, the people can, can, can also perform maintenance themselves. So in, in case of uh, complexity of the task, in term, uh, if, if the, the person uh, carrying out the maintenance doesn't feel that uh, uh, has completely the competencies to, to complete the task, uh, the, the support staff is, 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 assuming, uh, is assuming the role of, of uh, taking the leadership. So, and finally, um, um, and before uh, the certificate can be issued, there is also the check, and that means uh, all tasks are completed or appropriately deferred, um, all papers are complete, and also the check on the aircraft uh, on the condition, the general condition of the aircraft. I think this is more or less what we, it's not a self but I think it's, it's what we wanted to highlight, uh, the three pillars. So I come back now to my colleague Jeremy that uh, will explain the difficult topic. Yeah, so so we see the verification as three uh, three main uh, uh, yeah principles. But within these three principles, there is an, another principle: is how much um, how intense uh, should I uh, do my verification? Uh, should I uh, be over the shoulder all the time, or can I uh, give a bit of a uh, independence uh, or yeah can i go uh, to the office uh, doing some other things so this is really something of this paper is all this has to be tuned all these three pillars of carmen they have to be tuned and the intensity has to be tuned as well it depends on many things 
So here we are we are trying to, to represent. So it's an example. Don't take it for uh, the uh, Holy uh, Bible, but um, yes, it, it's it gives the example. So to 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 come into this chart. So we have two axes on the horizontal axis. The horizontal axis are elements that drives you to say, hey, maybe I can uh, uh, reduce the my intensity in the verification. Uh, so these are elements like, okay, my team is very experienced. My, my team is composed actually of all licensed engineers. So I, this drives me to to, conf, to be confident to to let them work in in more, uh, yeah. Uh, in, with, without too much uh, help from myself. So this is, for example, uh, yeah, an effect uh, driving you to reduce uh, your uh, uh, verification. But there are other side, other tasks. Even maybe if I my uh, mechanic does not have a license, this is a task that he's doing every week or every two days. So this drives me to to be confident uh, in. Uh, in his work and I can um, maybe reduce my level of involvement. If I have many support staff as well for my for my uh, shift or if the maintenance instructions are very clear or easy, this drives me in this sense. But okay, one thing maybe, be careful as well if you believe everything is too easy, sometimes it leads to complacency. So people get relaxed and so so. Uh, yeah, you can drive it uh, to reduce, but uh, don't uh, exaggerate. So that's the, the message huh? here for the bottom right uh, side. On the vertical axis, now these are elements which drive me to wow. Maybe I should uh, be a bit more present in the hangar, so and be more uh, yeah together with, with the team. So it's a kind of if I am task uh, which involve a lot of discipline. I have a mechanic, NDT is coming and they have to, uh, welding is playing a part and maybe this is where, yeah, I need to, to be there maybe for the interface. I need to be there more often to see a bit the progress. So discipline zone, number of tasks involved in, in the package, this drives me to, to increase my, uh, my level of verification. Huh? Or if, of course, if the task is complex, uh, maybe I want to be there and I don't need necessarily to be there all the time. I need to be there maybe for the complex part of it. Uh, if uh, a package uh, is a 10 task and the complex task is uh, at the end, maybe I will. Uh, this is the end where I should rather be present and, and checking and verifying. So, of course, another element is, uh, yeah, if we walk at night, if we are tired from the travel, uh, we are walking uh, away from the from the base. These are also elements driving me to, to, to be a bit more careful uh, as a support staff or certifying staff and, and be more present uh, uh, in the hunger. So yeah, criticality of the task, of course, we, we, we mentioned that. So so now maybe we, we can also talk about the, this plus, 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 uh, plus, minus. This was, we did not want to, to put some figure here uh, because, yeah, this has to be adapted to each organization. The main message here, and, and I think we will coming back to that, that first, it cannot be a verification zero does not exist. But, okay, uh, a low level could be, yeah, I, I'm I'm coming to the younger as a support staff or self staff. staff. Um, I come in regularly, but, okay, maybe not... Um, not so intensively uh, present in the hangar and whereas uh, the plus 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 uh, I need really to be there almost all the time maybe even in the plus 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 I need to reassign because maybe I need a better uh, or more experienced mechanic uh, to 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 give the task to uh, because this is uh, I cannot really re rely completely and uh, on this so and the plus minus yes it depends how much or what you do at this time. Should maybe I be there only for the uh, more sensitive uh, part of, of the task? But we, I think we wanted to pass the message that yes, this has to be tuned. This has to be tuned uh, over time. This has to be tuned over the three elements that we have seen in the in the paper, in, in the aircraft, in the hangar. So this all has to be tuned. I think that's the main message. Did I? Miss something, maybe it talks. 
I would like to just to add uh, something because I think I saw a question in the chat. The authorization process uh, to sign off does not require uh, a license, but the authorization to be support of certifying staff uh, requires the license. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So because uh, I think uh, yeah, yeah, this was made clear in the previous slide. If you go back one, that for the support staff or certifying staff, one more maybe. Uh, we have always this license on, on the left side, huh? uh, which is not there uh, for the authorized person. This this person may have or not a license, but in any case, the certified staff or, or super staff, he will always need to have this part 66 license, which is displayed here on the left. And another clarification is that the content of the paper, we, we were not able to cover all the topics that we would like have uh, like it to, to cover, but uh, for example, component maintenance is, is not covered. Some some of the principles are applicable, but uh, mm -hmm. we, we didn't cover that. And then I think we can pass to the key messages back to Eugenia. Thank you. Yeah, uh, after these slides that uh, trying to yeah give you the main picture in a very visual way, uh, allow me to, or allow us to, to insist on what the key messages are. Perhaps if you will go to one day. Thank you. So the first key, and no. please, yes. The first key message is on the authorization. The second one is on the planning. And the third one is on the level of verification. These are the three main points. Uh, to give a bit more of insights in each one of these three main groups uh, for the authorization scope, it has to be in accordance with the license privileges. You know, the privileges are described in, in Part 66. Uh, B1 does not cover fully B2 scope or vice versa. This is to keep in mind again, coming back to the privileges in Part 66. Combined roles are possible. Uh, you can be uh, support staff, and you can be certified staff. That's possible. And even for different aircraft. Exactly, yes, yeah. exactly. About the planning, realistic planning. Uh, you have to have enough sufficient uh, number of maintenance staff. Here we are referring on the slide to support staff because of insisting on the verification role. So it would be for support staff and certifying staff, of course. Um, Complexity and criticability of the tasks, it already plays a role when you are making the planning. Of course, the size of the aircraft, the area which is under maintenance plays a role as well. About verification, level of verification uh, cannot be zero. It has been already a message given by Jeremy before. We already saw one question at least in the, in the slide. Uh, that it has to be more highlighted. Uh, let's be clear, this is one of the key messages of this, of this paper. So yes, please keep it in mind. It doesn't mean that we are going to repeat the message in every single page of the paper, but yes, it is a key message. The level of verification, it is not really a paperwork exercise. It cannot be performed from a remote location. And something important is that the um, organization, the maintenance organization, has to have uh, in that procedure uh, the main criteria to arrive to the level of verification, which doesn't mean that the certifying staff, the support staff, cannot change this level of verification if he or she deemed it's necessary. So again, two things, organization, good procedures, having the overall idea, freedom to the certifying staff, support staff, to adjust the level of verification if needed. Uh, do you want to highlight something in particular, colleagues, before we go to the... Yes. I think you, it, it's a good summary. These three really authorization scope. Uh, I cannot uh, sign something for which I am not licensed. Uh, I cannot release some, uh, something for which I'm not licensed. Realistic planning, yes, quite important. Plan enough. And uh, yeah, uh, planning of support staff, planning of mechanics, and uh, certifying staff in some case. And yeah, level of verification has to be adjusted. Huh? There is something in, in the organization already that uh, support staff as always the last one, and certifying staff also. Good. 
I really think we are ready to go to a Sligo and to see the questions. Yeah, you see? So I think uh, now, Jeremy, you have to share the Sligo. Yeah. Sharing now. So we've seen that uh, there has been already some, some questions about it. Thank you for that. Again, as I mentioned before, it helps us to understand where your main focus is. So yeah, the first uh, question I think the most voted was about this um, yeah the paper that we we receive from the aircraft manufacturer. They sometimes have already two colons, MEC and inspection insp colon. So yeah, what what about this? Uh, uh, what about that uh, in respect of, of the paper? I think. So my, <laughs> I question, yeah, no, it's okay. The main principle here uh, is that it is the maintenance organization, the one responsible of uh, ensuring that the job cards are, I mean, how the job cards have to be filled in. Eh? Uh, so yes, uh, we take and we understand uh, it is acknowledged. These, these papers are coming from the TC folders. Uh, good that the maintenance organization could take them. And there is nothing wrong there, but it is up to the maintenance organization to define uh, how they are going to be filled in, what each column means, who is supposed to sign in every single test. I think you want to elaborate a bit more. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's a yeah, it's organization should should tell the mechanic how to fill. Yeah, yeah. that's a new sentence. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so we move. Yeah, we go to the second. Next one. Yeah, this paper is not addressing a staff performing independent inspections. Uh, well, in short, we've seen some feedback, which is basically uh, making comments on the scope of the paper, and this is one of those comments. Uh, the, the objective of the paper was to focus on the key elements, again, based on the feedback we already had, the evolution of the paper that had really six we have to limit somehow the scope because we will lose the focus. So it doesn't mean it is not a good question. It means that we have somehow to limit what we can tell in the in the paper. But still, we are happy to have your views. This is not the end of the journey. Uh, all the information that the ASA has uh, will be used in the future for some other purposes. So point taking, thank you. Again, we are even forced eh, to limit somehow the scope of the paper. Yeah, we, we wanted to, to really focus on the fundamental aspect uh, based on, on what we received, but all the topics of the 2015 paper are good and we will, yeah, we will continue for sure. Okay. So I'm not able to connect, maybe, okay, I will uh, swap this one. Uh, okay. Uh, now, ah, supervision. I believe this is something perhaps uh, Carmen oh, yes. mentioned. Yeah, I can I can answer this. Um, in fact, yes, we we when defining the the terms that we will be use it, uh, we said uh, okay, better to use uh, verification because we think supervision or working under supervision is the term that should be dedicated to a person that has not uh, the the authorization to sign off, meaning that. Uh, will be a trainee, a newcomer that is in the process to, to get the authorization. And uh, in, so in such cases, they, they, cannot, uh, they cannot sign off. Then they, they can still perform maintenance, but this has to be under the supervision of the person that will sign off. It's not necessary that this person is the support or the specifying staff, but the a person that is authorized to sign off the maintenance task that this trainee or newcomer is, is performing. I think that's uh... and yeah, we, we could complement to say supervision like, like in this context uh, is really the maximum level of verification that you could have in the context of a support staff or certifying staff, basically. I don't I, just uh, so I think there is a lot of frustration because people are connecting to the slide but not to the webinar. So you should have received uh, invitations to join the webinar and the slide of so, uh, but I think uh, some people are having technical problems to connect to the to the to the Webex. Well, we take note of this, and we will see. We will analyze later on 
if it was fighting in a nature or an impact in a field, which unfortunately was not really the intention, that's clear. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, so this we have a you might see that we are covering the slide of questions and we go one per one on, on the ones that are most voted. Yeah? Yeah. So yeah, here basically I already mentioned something when when I was on the on the key messages. Be repeated, yes. Exactly. Of course we agree with this and yeah, that's uh, the whole thing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So next one, note. Yeah. Uh, this one I can answer directly. Uh, this, uh, there is a typo error here, and we will correct and put the correct number of the regulation. No problem. Thank you for that. Uh, next one. Yeah, I'm signed off by both uh, support staff, certified staff. So here I understand we are talking about base maintenance. Is becoming a paperwork exercise. Uh, that are serving its purpose of verification of the tasks. It is, at least by the uh, person raising the question, it is perceived as an extra burden. And basically, the question is what says a perspective uh, on signing up before, sorry, the question is after the aircraft has departed. Well, uh, yeah, as a perspective is clear, uh, the, the, the paperwork is part of the maintenance. Uh, it is the demonstration that something has been done. This is the proof that the process has been followed in a proper way. So, yeah, uh, the, uh, it has a, does not support that the paperwork is done um, when the aircraft has already departed. Yeah, this is really uh, a key uh, point. I would say really a no go. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is that the regulation foresee a verification step. This has to be uh, uh, formalized somehow. Huh? We are flexible on this, uh, but uh, regulation ask it. This can be audited, so we need to to, to see something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next, please. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, in this question. Um, uh, the the inquirer is um, yeah basically highlighting the one of the sentences that uh, uh, EASA put in this draft uh, policy paper, which is that the verification cannot be performed from a remote location. And um, his views or her views needs to be detailed further. So, is a physical verification of the correctness of work performed on the aircraft expected as part of the verification? Well, the answer is just uh, it is expected. So yes. uh, again, this is not uh, a paperwork exercise, and you really need to be uh, close to the to the aircraft. This is really remote location. Yeah, it is not really a concept that really goes well with with the overall discussion that we are having today. More yeah, the, the, we, we talked about some stakeholders recently on this and one was saying, well, sometimes you need to be able to smell, to touch, to feel vibration or things. So, yeah, mm -hmm. you need to be there uh, on the aircraft to, to, to yes. certify. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next one. Yes, the next one. Is uh, engine and component maintenance? Yes, I think perhaps uh, you can take it, Carmen. Yes, okay. We will talk also about the uh, next steps. Uh, so we said before we started with the paper with uh, a very limited scope because we wanted also to to see uh, whether the the idea to to refresh the old paper is uh, supported and now of course we have other tasks to, to take into account but but in in principle uh, yeah there are no details now how to do maintenance on, on components and there are parts of the paper that uh, might be applicable um, uh, we will take this into account uh, for for future revision of the of the paper. We we have only um, the draft now. Uh, even after publication, we we can always complement uh, if if we see that is a benefit for for uh, for the community. And we we, we decided on purpose not to include B and C and engine and component management just to make it simple because 
we are talking about license. We, want, we wanted to refer to 66 license, which do not exist. So um, that was a deliberate choice not to speak about. But in principle, you verify, you certify this is valid for any kind of maintenance. So yeah, uh, uh, regardless of, of the license. So this is valid in any case, yes. Mm -hmm. Next. Yes. All right. Uh... <laughs> Well, this question is not really within the scope of really the discussion, but, but yeah, let's, but you, let's give it a try. Like the topic, think, no? Well, <laughs> who is responsible for the classification of the maintenance critical tasks? Uh, well, if you you follow what it is in the EU regulation, clearly it's the 145, and the 145 can take this some information. Of course, uh, they would consider this all the information. That's clear. Eh? But the responsible in accordance with the EU regulation is the 145. Yes, that's. Okay. That's a clear. Again, okay, not really in the scope of this webinar, but yeah, happy okay. to take the question <laughs> because there are six. Uh, yeah, good words. Comments on good this. words. So next, um, how do organization document the level of verification? Mm -hmm. Is it decided by person who is verifying? So yeah, I I think it's a bit of a repetition of what I said before. We have to document it. We have to formalize somehow up to the organization to propose something which works for them. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, that's a necessary step for audit and uh, simply for audit and, and for yeah, demonstrating that you comply with, with your procedure. That's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, I would say something to. No, I think you're really good. Mm -hmm. good. Next. Uh, yes, this is important. Uh, ah, yeah. Sheet this... metal and composite. Sorry. So basically, I understand. Oh, this common goes within something not as slightly what it is a you know really the topic of today because it's touching the uh, privileges of the aircraft license the staff aircraft maintenance license staff so yeah we take the comment um yeah this is basically comment notice this is basically what we say it is not really what we have in the close future to come to a separate structural license. This is something we can already say. This is not really planned for, for the close future. Can be discussions on privileges of the current certified staff licenses? Yeah, we will see in the future. Maybe the, the, the question is also from the fact that the B1 maybe will verify uh, the job done by a structural expert, a welding, or this is maybe the question behind that maybe the authorized person has actually more uh, expertise in one particular domain yeah, but second. still mm -hmm. is verified by the b11 and yes th this is the purpose uh the b1 will not just verify every step it will verify the, the result of this methods is it acceptable for the aircraft something like this right mm -hmm. so this is and this license his license as a b1 uh enable him to, to, to judge whether the, this particular work is acceptable, basically. Okay, so the two elements from the verification perspective, yes, taking This is from the verification perspective, yeah, 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 okay. and from the license you covered very well. All right. Uh, so perhaps, uh, Carmen, you can take... Yes, and in fact, I think there is a paragraph in the, in the yeah. paper clarifying this, that, uh, okay, the certifying staff C, which is for uh, the base maintenance of uh, complex uh, motor power aircraft, um, still has to verify. Um, of course, it's not uh, verifying what the support staff itself is verifying. So his present in, in the maintenance hangar is not continuous. It's uh, only when it's required because of uh, evaluation of defects. Uh, and uh, when, uh, okay, from time to time is expected to, to have uh, also a, a look at uh, what is, uh, what is uh, the status of the, of the maintenance. But uh, we see here that uh, the, the C certifying staff uh, um, is probably a little bit more administrative than uh, the, 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 the B, B or B, B1, B2 uh, certifying staff. And I, I think uh, you can also probably say something more or it's, it's okay. We were actually checking the, the, the time and checking the next questions. So. <laughs> Uh, no, but um, what I do, yes, in my case, I have nothing to, to, to add. Yeah, I think you covered it. Um, 
as Jeremy said, we are checking, we are really making an effort trying to cover as many questions as possible, but yeah, time is running. So I suggest we take one more and then we have uh, this. Yeah, we are very, because we, we still have some information to pass for the next step. So this one is, does DMO need to issue an authorization to any person participating in maintenance? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. A clear yes. Okay. And um, yeah, and this you can arrange with your competent authority in your uh, manual. Uh, you you have some uh, flexibility for the, for this. Huh? Uh, I just wanted to take the next one quickly. Um, that was jumping because we had one. What? See, no, that, that was a new one. Yeah, yeah it's, it's some the one I wanted to answer disappeared. So about the steel, okay. no? the steel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know where it is now, but uh, okay. Um, one more. We take one more and then. Okay, physical inspection be there next to the aircraft is one thing, and and it is agreed. But recheck and reinspect the performance of each task physically. On the aircraft seems to be more similar to need to perform this planning. Yeah, good, good that you are like this. So let's pass the message again. The authorized person carry out this task, but the support staff is not verifying every task, is verifying the result of this maintenance. Okay. Yeah. It's verifying maybe he's there during the first one, during the last one, he is coming and asking, checking. Uh, but does not have to be there and does not have to countersign all the steps. It will be maybe one signature for 10 tasks done by the authorized person. So, yeah, uh, there is, we don't, I think we are not speaking here about signing, signing, signing all the time. Super staff is signing a package, uh, a meaningful package of a, a task, a kind of repair or installation of toilets, or uh, we are speaking about more this than every step. I think it is clear then. Uh, again, time is running, so we. Karen, will you share the last slide of the presentation? Okay. Yeah, yes. I can do that. And, and but we will. Have have oh, yeah, we have the poll. Before going uh, to the, um, so, the wrap up of the session, we, we have prepared for you a couple of polls. So please go to your uh, slide all. On your mobile phone or your computer, we are now launching a poll. You want to present the poll? Well, basically, the, the question, as you see there, is uh, how much would you consider you or your organization adhere to the principles described in the paper? So here, uh, yeah, uh, we will give you just a bit of time to answer. Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you think? Well, we, we see uh, and we can see a uh, kind of a uh, trend uh, live uh, now on screen. Uh, my hope is that, yeah, um, most already understand. Maybe there are some details here, uh, but uh, I, that's my hope that most will already apply this. And uh, yeah, uh, let's maybe give a couple of more time, uh, seconds for the answers. But yeah, the trend is good. I would say yes. What do you think, Anne? Uh We can about the. Uh, have we finished? It's already open. It's still uh, open. People can still vote, so it can still move. So yes, you, you see again. You see it moving because we see who is voting and how it is changing. Maybe if you want me to freeze, I think so I give everybody ten seconds and I freeze. And we freeze, yes. And then we can comment maybe the kind of result. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. So, so maybe I can show the result again. Yes. Okay. Show result. Okay. okay, so what we see here is that uh, half of the participants in, in this webinar, uh, their consideration is that they fully apply or the organizations fully apply. Mostly apply, I would say that having 90% of mostly apply and fully apply is not really a bad number. And we see some deviations here. Uh, 
uh, I would say that the vast majority are on the mostly at high school level. I think the conclusion from our side is, uh, yeah, it, this is a really good yeah. feature, of course. Mm -hmm. Things can be improved always. And this mostly maybe are some details that we help. We think maybe this paper will help to, sure. to, yeah. to compensate or to, to correct. Sure. We prepared another another one. All right. So now it's more about the interest of the of the paper of the such webinar. Uh, is it useful? Does it clarify uh, some aspect? Or we are really interested to to see whether such kind of a, of a, yeah um, webinar can, can help or um, uh, yeah welcome by the of community. Course. <laughs> of course, uh, um, launching a webinar is a uh, is a means that EASA has to engage with all of you. We are reaching a lot of people through this tool today. So yes, honestly, for us, it's important to understand if this is a method uh, that works for you, at least to raise awareness on, on a particular technical topic, or in this case, a coming policy. And of course, we hear what you say in the sense that we modified, uh, we even provided some more feedback on specific topics because we saw the questions that you kindly uh, posed in a slide before the webinar. So we, we heard what you had to say before before coming here. Okay, I think there has been also some frustration about uh, not uh, being able to join the WebEx. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes. I hope uh, uh, these technical problems, uh, unfortunately, I, I, we were not able to solve that. Uh, maybe uh, we, we have to be, uh, we, I understood that uh, there will be the possibility to have up to 1,000 participants and in the WebEx we, we didn't reach that value yet. Anyway, I think uh, this is not uh, probably the paper itself. It seems you know, outcome is the technical. Is yeah, we, we will certainly investigate internally. Yeah, first extent is the problem, or yeah, okay. we, we don't. We really yeah. cannot really conclude. But we, we take that. Yeah, it's rather quite welcome uh, by the community, at least for those who join. So. This is what we can explain exactly, because the score here is 3.9, which is almost 4. That's good news. Yeah. So, yes, we, we appreciate this and for everyone, so we really appreciate having uh, this first uh, hint from your side. So, so let's yeah. move on to, to conclude. So, I go back to the... Uh, to the so we'll stop sharing. We can share now. So, so back to you, Eugenia, the last, last slide. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, allow me first to say and to repeat something we said at the very beginning because I saw some, some comments in the chat. Uh, we will uh, send the, the, the slides, uh, will be available for you. They will be in the ASA website. So please uh, go to the website. They will be put there as soon as possible. And the recording of this session will be available as well. Uh, again, this is just to, to, to answer some of the quick uh, messages we are just receiving. So, yeah, what the next steps are? We will publish the paper, as we already mentioned. We are considering uh, some of the comments that we already saw, some of the themes, the interest that, that you showed on particular points. Uh, yes, uh, there was uh, some hints on the continue revision of the paper, the current paper, which was published on, on 2015. Uh, we accept, it has to be clarified exactly what is superseded and what is not. So we will take an action there. And certainly it is our intention to continue the revision. Uh, allow me to highlight the rulemaking task because again, we saw some of the comments in the in a slide and in the chat uh, talking about uh, uh, MPA that was issued by EASA some years ago, which is linked to the rulemaking task that you have right now on your slide, on your, yeah, on your slide, on your screen. Uh, in the current planning, this opinion will be issued next year. So yes, it is still, it is still there in the plan. It will be issued. 
for obvious reasons, uh, the concepts that we have discussed in the policy paper, they will be part of this. Uh, this is obvious. Uh, the process has not finished. Um, and as, I, as we were saying before, this is a journey and there will be more uh, in the future. So, from our side, just to say, yeah, a big thank you to the audience uh, for being active through a Slido, through the polls. It helps us. Uh, Pop, that was a, a good session for you. Allow me to say thank you to my colleagues here, to Jeremy, <laughs> to Carmen, to Tom. Um, yeah, from our side, we are ready to, to close this session. Again, thanks and have a nice weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.